The Global EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards will be announced shortly. 49 entrepreneurs from around the world have gathered in Monte Carlo to find out who will walk away with the coveted award. Representing India is Sajjan Jindal, the chairman of the JSW Group. Now, here is what the citation for Sajjan Jindal as he won the EY India Entrepreneur of the Award read. In fact, this was a jury headed by KV Kamath, the former chairman of ICICI Bank. It said Sajjan Jindal has created a track record of executing large capital intensive technically complex and state-of-the-art steel manufacturing facilities on principles of cost efficiency and operational excellence well joining me now live from monte carlo is sanjay jindal mr jindal always a pleasure many thanks for joining us here on cnbc tv 18 and once again congratulations on representing india at the world entrepreneur of the year awards thank you thank you shireen Well, Mr. Jindal, you know, before I talk to you about the group, let's talk about India, because you are there in Monte Carlo. You're up against 49 other contenders, other entrepreneurs from different parts of the world. It's a very diverse set of entrepreneurs representing diverse countries and diverse sectors and industries. Let's start by talking about the thesis on India. Uh, every day there are reports coming out estimating what India's growth could look like over the next 10 years, what could be the potential drivers of growth. I want to understand from you what your India bet is as of today. You know, uh, Shireen, I've been in Europe for the last uh, two, three days, and uh, I've been meeting a lot of people from different industries and uh, different uh, walks of life. And everybody, uh, the whole world, it seems, is talking about India. And uh, everybody is so excited about India. And everybody knows that the next decade, two decades, somebody told me four decades belong to India. So, and this is for, for true that uh, the next years, uh, coming years are going to be for India. We've been waiting for this moment for uh, probably two decades. But finally, we, are, uh, we can see the end, light at the end of the tunnel. And these decades are definitely going to be for India. Okay, so the next few decades could belong to India. That's uh, your thesis and that's the feedback that you say you're getting from uh, people that you are meeting there at the World EY Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. But let's now talk about the group, Mr. Jindal, uh, because the revenue of the JSW Group, that's JSW Steel and Energy Combined, has grown at a CAGR of a little over 17% over the last five years between FI19 and FI23. Steel, cement, infrastructure, energy, paints revenue of 22 billion dollars you talked about the growth projections for india let me ask you about the growth projections for the group what could the group look like in the next decade <laughs> it's it's very very difficult uh, to to project or to predict but uh, you know we as a group are as you have uh, just now mentioned all the companies in the group are all basically uh, in the in the infrastructure space and is very closely connected with the growth of the country. So as India grows, we will grow faster because we have to need, meet the needs of, of a growing India. And so therefore, I'm very optimistic that uh, in the next seven to 10 years, uh, as the country gets to uh, close to $10 trillion mark, uh, we will be also up there. Uh, I don't have the numbers in my head right now, but uh, we, will, we will match up the uh, India's growth or, or uh, you know, better that growth. Okay. Uh, you know, let's talk specifics, Mr. Jindal. And uh, what we are seeing today is a lot of Indian conglomerates, a lot of the large Indian legacy businesses are now diversifying into new businesses, especially more consumer-oriented businesses. Uh, and that's been the case as far as JSW is concerned as well, whether it is the renewable energy transition or the paints business. These are new but adjacent areas that you're getting into. What could we expect in terms of new bets from here on, or do you think that you have enough on the plate for now? No, I think it's the, uh, it's the uh, uh, need of the hour that uh, uh, one gets into consumer business as well. Uh, but our strength lies in the core, core uh, sector of the industry, and that is where we are uh, very much focused as JSW. But uh, simultaneously, we are also uh, investing in areas which are consumer-oriented, uh, uh, but, but because that does not call for very large ca capital expenditure. So therefore, we want to uh, uh, you know, uh, check, out, check out that sector as well. 
And most of the groups in the country, as you rightly said, are entering into consumer durables, even though they were in the, in the infrastructure space. So when you talk about a consumer bet and the play on consumption, uh, Mr. Jindal, what will that mean? You know, it's been about four months since our last conversation where you said that you were revisiting your plans to get into the electric vehicle business at the premium side of the electric mobility uh, car space. Uh, uh, where are you on that uh, plan at this point in time? How close are you to being able to take that forward? There's been a lot of rumor and speculation that you could possibly be eyeing MG Motors as well. Is there any truth to that? And where else within the consumer space are we likely to see you make a play? So, so there, are, uh, there are many areas uh, that uh, attracts us that uh, are potential areas. For example, uh, as part of our renewable uh, uh, industry, renewable journey, uh, we are looking at battery uh, to manufacture batteries in India. Um, uh, that's, a, that's an area which, which is a very large area and we feel that we are uh, pretty uh, uh, kind of uh, organized to be in that sector because it is, it is a sector which is up our uh, uh, alley and we understand that business very well. So that's one area we are looking to do. On the electric uh, vehicle, EV, uh, our strategy, we are uh, continuing to work on that strategy. We are uh, not yet, uh, we haven't yet closed any deal or, or we haven't yet decided or put our finger on the uh, final product. But uh, we, are, uh, we are going to uh, work on it over the next uh, six to eight months and try and see that we can build uh, the uh, electric vehicle. I'm very excited about this, uh, this opportunity for India because I feel that over the next seven to ten years, electric vehicles are going to be the major uh, 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 mobility driver in the country. And uh, we want to be there when, it, when this uh, idea or when this uh, opportunity uh, arises. Well, the opportunity is here, Mr. Jindal, and uh, you, you've sort of sidestepped my question on whether you could potentially be looking at a deal with MG Motor. I mean, you're, you're somebody who hasn't shied away from acquisitions uh, across uh, your businesses, uh, and you've gone after distressed assets in your other businesses. I'm not suggesting that uh, this is a distressed asset, but is there any truth or any possibility of inking a deal with an existing electric mobility player? So, uh, uh, so Shireen, uh, always uh, it's an easier uh, route uh, to to take uh, through acquisition because, and especially in an area where you are not present in a steel business, uh, it is not necessary that we will go for acquisition because uh, that's okay. But in an in a new area, whether it is battery or EV or something else, which is not our domain uh, industry, uh, acquisition could be an area, but. Uh, through acquisition, it also gets a little bit more complicated because it is not designed to your specs, specs and uh, you, you may not um, uh, really uh, get what you want. So, so it's, uh, it's both ways. And on MG Motor, if you're asking me specifically, because I don't shy away from uh, difficult questions, uh, that's also in, uh, one, of the, uh, is, is, is one of the lists in, the, in our list. Uh, could be one of the uh, options if, if they want to... Uh, uh, sell, but uh, but I'm not sure as yet. Okay, uh, a majority stake is that what you're eyeing as far as MG Motors is concerned? And what else is on that list, sir? You said that that's one of the contenders on the list. What else is on the list? So, so when I said list, uh, what I meant was that there are many opportunities, global opportunities. Uh, which uh, they all want to, they are knocking at India's doors and they are looking for good partners in India. So we could partner up with uh, 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 European uh, companies, uh, Japanese companies, Chinese companies. Uh, so, so there are so many opportunities which are, which are existing today. And uh, there are not many, uh, many large groups in India who are uh, uh, right there to, to grab that kind of an opportunity. So, JSW is a, is a good, uh, uh, you know, sort of uh, organization to tie up with. Okay. Uh, you know, you talked about partnerships potentially with European companies, with Japanese companies, even with Chinese companies, and I would imagine that that's in the context of MG, Mr. Jindal. Uh, I want to understand from you, you know, uh, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, you had made it very clear that while you are a believer in free trade, you had said that uh, our rules of engagement 
especially on economy and business, needed to be very different with China because, in your words, China had not behaved properly. Uh, now, is there a change in position there uh, as far as dealing with China and Chinese business is concerned? So, um, uh, so there are two things. Uh, one is that in, in EV, uh, China is, uh, you know, way ahead of competition, global competition. So therefore, uh, China becomes a natural ally as far as uh, new technology in battery and electric mobility is concerned. So, um, so that is one part of the story. On the other side, that uh, if, if we have a um, hostile relationship with, between India and China, then obviously we will, not, we will not work with the Chinese. That is very clear. So as a, as a group, we have always taken that position. But, but to build India, if, if the technology is available only in China, uh, or that kind of technology and the cost structure, which the Chinese can provide us and the Europeans cannot, then we have to... Uh, we have to think uh, twice before uh, we uh, we really decide. So, um, so I think uh, it's a it's a it's a difficult question to answer. But yes, that is that is my position.